there's many different ways in which you can think about a pathway, and Laura will recognise this picture as it was drawn by uh, Laura's PhD supervisor and our collaborator, uh, Professor Lee Smith. And it's really an attempt by him to, so he's wrote the textbooks about Leydig cells and Totoli cells in the testes, and, and he's an expert in male fertility. Uh, and this was his attempt to essentially summarise certain aspects of that pathway, as almost any biologist might do, which is sit down and have a mind splurt and, and, and put down all the things you know and how they relate to each other. And it's a great diagram but it's actually not very useful. It, you know, it, it covers many different things. It covers development, it covers different cell types, it covers different organ systems, and in all in one diagram merged together. And although it actually, to him, obviously meant a lot, or he wouldn't actually have sat down and drawn it, it's kind of hard to interpret, I think we'd fair to say, for anybody else as to what really has been explained here. And obviously there are certain concepts which are just drawn with a, a stroke of the pen but actually there's a quite a lot of detail there. So it, it, it's, it's, it's something that any biologist of any standing will produce for you, but they're, not, they're useful to themselves, but not really useful to anyone else. There is another branch of uh, modelling uh, called, um, I suppose, usually driven by mathematical orientated scientists or mathematicians generally, and it generally uses a lot of mathematics to describe a system. Now, this almost, in some ways, is the core basis of systems biology. So systems biology was almost started by math mathematicians because they said, actually, we can explain how systems work using maths. And they kind of can, but actually the tools in which they use to describe a system are, are, are almost a mathematical construct which is beyond, or certainly under my comprehension in many cases, and many others. So in this way, they are using a series of equations to describe aspects of the cell cycle. Now, in each one of these equations, there's constants that need to be filled in. So often, if you're looking at a reaction, you might put the reaction rate as a basis for saying how fast that part of the reaction would happen. You end up with a system which is very complicated. I think even this snapshot might agree. But when you run these equations together, you can make predictions about the dynamics of the system and see how things might change over time under certain conditions, under certain assumptions. So mathematical modeling is actually quite a large area. There are many people doing this. There are many different ways of doing this, using ma different mathematical constructs to describe a system and then to run those mathematics and, and actually get an output which is predictive or at least well, ideally it's predictive, but quite often what it does is explain in a series of mathematics how this answer that you might know already has been achieved through a series of logic statements. So generally the problem with this is that a biologist will go to a mathematician and say, I want to understand the dynamics of my system, and what will happen is that there's a real comprehension gap between the two people. So the biologist generally doesn't know what they want to actually model, and the mathematician doesn't know anything about the biology, and somehow these guys have to communicate in their quite different languages. One that we saw earlier, and now we have this. And it's a difficult relationship, even at the best at times. But as I say, it's still a big field. There are many people actively engaged in mathematical modeling of, of different systems. Uh, and it is one way to do pathway biology. Okay? Not something that we're going to consider today, but what we are going to try and do is use diagrams and mathematics to give predictions on systems in a way that isn't based on equations. There is this view of a pathway, I guess. Um, and so quite often what we do within, as we saw yesterday, is we start off with the data set. We look at that data. We say, oh, these genes are interesting. And then we say, what are these genes? And so using sort of transcriptomics or other approaches, it's quite easy nowadays to get a list of genes which are interesting or potentially interesting to you. But of course, what it is is a list of genes. And really, the aim is to try and understand what those list of genes might mean. So this is something that you could perhaps do, is you could take a list of genes, and then you associate these genes with the regulation of actin cytoskeleton. You associate these genes with translation type junctions, and now that you're all familiar with the ideas of, uh, of, of networks, you can see what they've done. They've taken known interactions between these proteins and somehow left them on there, and you've got this view of 
this list of proteins and how each of them might be, I suppose, coming together to make a particular function within that list. Now, whether this overall will actually tell you much about the biology, it's something that I've done. It's something that many others do, and you'll read in papers where we got this set of genes and this is the explanation of what they are. But it isn't really that useful in, in many respects. It is better than a list, but it's still essentially a, a collection of ideas, I think at best, of, of what that list might mean. Of course, there is this view, which perhaps precedes the view we've just seen, where you take a series of data, as we saw yesterday, you carve it up, and actually quite often, as we saw with the cell cycle, just by association, you can associate genes with function just by how they are actually expressed and how they are expressed in, a co in the context of other uh, paradigms. So we don't need to go through this because essentially you know what this is now and you know how powerful this might be in deriving lists of genes from a given data set. But of course, it is just a list of genes and we don't know quite know what those genes are. The hard work starts after we've defined what is interesting to work out why it's interesting and what it might actually mean. So there are many views of what might constitute a pathway model. And this is what you get if you type in cell cycle into Google and look at the images. You get this smorgasbord of, of different images that have been produced. Presumably each one of these pictures took quite a while, <laughs> took a lot, someone a lot of time to actually draw, but actually they're all different. And because they're all different, we can't really use them because how do you say what's that representing versus what that is representing? How do you begin to merge these together to get an overall picture of the cell cycle? So if I'm interested in the cell cycle, I have a list of genes associated with the cell cycle. How do I map my list of genes onto these diagrams? How do I even put it all together into a coordinated view? The reality is you can't because they're pictures. They use, as we'll see, different language, both graphical and textual language, to describe the same thing. And as of that, it's a mess. We can't do much with it.